everybody students of third year this is the study of language by George Yule and this is the fourth edition the fourth edition um, in some editions uh, and the preparation or the assignment for this lecture is what animal um, and the human language animal and the human language in this edition which is the fourth one it is chapter two but in some editions it is chapter uh, four this is chapter two the um, distinction between the human language and animal communication we have studied that before in the previous um, book i mean jane etchins book this which is the introduction to linguistics and this is a revision or this is a review for uh, what we have studied before I'm, I'm going to focus on the very important points in this chapter um, number one there are a lot of stories about creatures that can talk who can talk only human beings or other creatures also can talk we usually assume that they are fan that they are fantasy or fiction or that they involve birds of animals simply imitating something they have here the humans say you see good yet we think that the creatures are capable of communicating we think we are not sure uh, that creatures are capable of communicating certainly with other members of their own species that's to say birds may communicate with other birds horses may communicate with other horses and every kind of a species may communicate with their own species i mean the uh, similar species to them it is possible that a creature could learn to communicate with the humans you is it so this is a question this is a question you see is it possible that a creature could learn to communicate with the humans using language or does a human language have a properties that make it so unique that it is quite unlike any other communicative system and hence unreadable unlearnable sorry unlearnable by any other creature to answer these questions we first look at some special properties of a human language this is very important we are going to focus on some properties of a human language in order to distinguish what are the these features and how they may be different from other creatures right first what are these properties what are these properties number one it is what communication number one is what communication number two it is what reflexivity number two reflexivity number three displacement number three displacement number four arbitrariness number five productivity number six cultural transmission number seven duality these are the features of uh, we are going to see what is meant by every one of these concepts and there are some experiences related to these uh, concepts and to see what is the difference between human language and other creatures language what is related to communication what is related to communication we have communicative signals and we have informative signals uh, we should first distinguish between specifically communic communicative signals and those which may be un unintentionally informative signals okay someone listening to you may become informed 
about you you may do a sign you may do a sign and this sign sends an information or sends a message to the uh, receiver or to the observer without telling anything you do, you do not tell anything but by using a sign this sign would what tell other people uh, about what you are going what you are intending so this is what an informative signal an in informative signal uh, you may do something okay and or you may do a sign um, someone listening to you may become informed about you through a number of signals you see that you have not intentionally sent you have not intentionally sent she may know that you have a cold you see when you sneezed when you sneezed this is uh, how how do uh, how does the um, listener got or how does the listener understand you see that the that you have a cold throughout the sneezing or uh, may, you may tell what the uh, listener that you have you are not an ease when you shifted around in your seat or you may tell the uh, listener or you may tell tell others that you are disorganized when you are not matching socks and that you are from somewhere else you are not from this place you are not from this town when you uh, have a strange accent however when you use language to tell this person okay I'm one of the applicants for the vacant position of senior brain surgeon at the hospital you are normally considered to be intentionally communicating something in this way so you have you have witnessed or you have seen the difference in this way for example when you are telling this sentence when you are telling this sentence okay uh, i'm one of the applicants for the vacant you see and to other etc um senior I'm, I'm one of the applicants for the vacant position of senior brain surgeon at the hospital in this way you are intentionally communicating something intentionally but in these ways you are not intentionally you are not telling the listener what is happening to you you are not telling that you uh, that you have a cold you are not telling him that you are uh, at, you aren't at ease you are not telling him that you are disorganized you are not telling him that you are from other place in all these ways what um, you are uh, sending uh, unintentionally message these messages are called what informative signals these messages are informative signals while this message i mean of this sentence you are telling okay this is communicative signal this is the difference between the communicative signals and the informative uh, signals so both of these communicative signals and informative signals in terms of we consider them uh, both in terms of their potential as a means of intentional communication you see as intentional communication good other properties of a human language while we tend to think of communication as the primary as the primary function of a human language what is the primary function of a human language it is communication communication is the means of primary function of a human language it is not a distinguishing feature because all creatures communicate all creatures communicate in some way however 
we suspect that other creatures are not reflecting on the way they create their communicative message or reviewing how they work or not. That is, one barking dog, this is an example about the communication of other creatures. One barking dog is a properly not offering advice to another barking dog along the lines of, hey, you should lower your bark to make it sound more m menacing. This is, um, so the barking dog sending a message, but this message does not tell the other dog what is happening. You see, um, there is a feature, so they are not barking, they are not sending, for example, uh, a message like a human when they say for for example, I wish he wouldn't use so many technical terms. In this way, there is something, a concept, there is a concept which is a, a feature of a human language is called reflexi reflexivity. Reflexivity. What is reflexivity? It is the property of re reflexiveness, which accounts for the fact that we can use language to think and talk about language itself. We can use language to think and talk about language itself. This is what reflexivity. This is the uh, second feature. Then this, the communication is the first feature and reflexivity, which is the ability to think and talk is the second feature. The third feature is what displacement. And we studied all this in Jane Etchin's book. This placement is to tell something uh, in this time and at the same place, at the same time and in the same place. So the, this message um, as relating to that immediate time and the place. For example, the meowing cat, meowing cat, you see? This message as relating to the immediate and to the immediate time and the place. So, cat where it has been and where it was up to. Good. So, it is here and now. This is displacement. Language users to talk about, um, it allows, the displacement allows language users to talk about things and events you see, not a present in the immediate environment, like a human. This is a feature of a human's language, that they tell about things not now and not in this place. This feature is not found in other creatures' language. Animal communication is generally considered to lack this property, to lack this property, okay? Only one thing, only one thing, which is be dancing, the be dancing or be communication, when it tells about what the uh, nectar uh, beehive, you see, about the nectar beehive, the place of, uh, of honey, be communication, a small exception, this is a small exception. Yani as if there is displacement, as if there is displacement, it is not a displacement like a human beings, but it is similar to displacement uh, because it seems to uh, have some version of displacement. And this is an example how the uh, bee tells um, other bees about the uh, hive. You may read this example. Good, there is also... Um, a question, doesn't this, a question, doesn't this ability of the bee to indicate a location some in distance away mean that bee communication has at least some degree of displacement or, as a feature? This is a question. Yes, yes, the answer is yes, but it is displacement of a very limited type. It is displacement of a very limited type. Other feature is arbitrariness. All what we talk about, for example, now any word in any language, for example, the word dog, 
in uh, English and the word kelb in Arabic. You see that there is a dog, there is the form, the form which is a dog, you see, this is a dog, okay, the form of a dog and this is the object and this is the word, okay, the word dog is made of three figures which are de and o and j, j you see, which is pronounced as ge j and uh, the you see the word dog made of three figures or three phonemes and the word kelb in arabic is made of k and le and be when you uh, take every one of these or when you take uh, i mean when you take every one of these phonemes or these figures aside it has no meaning when you take also you see the um, the word dog or the word kelp, it has no relation to that animal which has a three legs and so on and so forth. There is no relation. So, there is no connection, natural connection between a linguistic form, this is a linguistic form, okay, and this is a linguistic form. There is no relation between a linguistic form and its meaning. Its meaning means the animal itself, the animal itself. You see, there is no connection between the um, the word, I mean the word dog, which is a linguistic form, and the animal it refers to. You see, this is what arbitrariness, this is arbitrariness. This aspect of relationship between linguistic signs and objects so the object is the animal itself and the linguistic signs are the signs of the word okay the relation between this and that is what arbitrary arbitrary uh, it has arbitrariness there is what there is what we call echoism echoism this echoism may be found in some expressions like for example the word now ball fall, small, tall, wall. Do you think that the this rhyming, you see, or this echoing is, um, is intention, intentional or non-intentional? Is there any relationship when you have gathered all these words together? All these words together. Ball, fall, small, tall, wall. Did you gather them arbitrarily? or non-arbitrarily no it, the relation between them is not arbitrary the relation between them is not not arbitrary so when you brought them together not arbitrarily you see so what is there it is less arbitrary connection this is gathering of these words is less arbitrary connection right so the feature of a human's language is that uh, what they make words and the symbols of these words are not related to the object itself. So there is, there is what arbitrariness. In, hu in, in animals or in what other creatures, it is non-arbitrary. You see, non-arbitrariness of animal signaling may be closely connected to the fact. You see, this is the reality. So when they make a sound, I mean when animals make a sound, this, uh, this sound for, um, for many years, you see, it means the same thing. When the, there is certain danger, the animal makes this sound. Everybody understands that this sound, everybody understands that this sound means danger, that this sound means, means that the animal is thirsty, that this sound may, means the animal is hungry. So there is connection, there is connection. This connection means non-arbitrariness. This connection means non-arbitrariness. Other feature is what productivity. Humans are continually creating new expressions. Humans have this humans have this 
feature, this property, that they are able to what create new expressions and novel utterances by manipulating in their linguistic resources to describe new objects and situations. How? By, for example, uh, in Arabic language now, what do we say, for example? Uh, we say, bus, نقول bus, ونقول سيارة, ونقول taxi, ونقول, there are many different expressions for the same object, for the same object. نقول, um, many, many different expressions. You see, um, نقول طابة, ونقول كرة. This manipulating by using different expressions for the same thing is what productivity. So one of the human's language is what um, productivity. Animals do not have this feature. You see, they cannot make what, or they cannot produce um, uh, what new expressions. They cannot produce new expressions. By the way, there are many different experiences given here. All what humans, or uh, sorry, all what animals or other creatures can use is what signs. They use signs, not words, not uh, what expressions, and they cannot manipulate. They cannot produce a new expressions. But humans language have this productivity, or what we call creativity, or open-endedness. There is no end. Open-endedness. You see, for making new uh, words. Look well at this uh, smile because of this expression, this expression that um, the problem seems to be that B communication, to be that B, B and B. You see the difference that B you see, uh, the problem seems to be that B. This is what plain on words, plain on words, B and B. They are homophonous, homophonous, but I, they are different in meaning, different in meaning. Um, according to Carl Vaughan, Carl Vaughan, this is what a scientist who made certain experience to uh, Carl Vaughan, Frisch, 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 who conducted the experiment that, who, what, what did the, this Carl Vaughan say? That the bees have no word for up in their language. Can the bee tell about something up? They say up. Or it moves up. Yes, the bee moves up to tell other bees that there is something up. You see, this limiting feature of animal communication is described in terms of fixed reference. This limit feature of animal communication is described in terms of fixed reference. So fixed reference is that what it tells that this sign is understood to all uh, other animals, to all animals. So. Uh, for example, when when the animal I when, I mean when the bee leaves, for example, or flies up, it tells that it tells other bees that there is something up. This is a fixed reference. Or when, for example, the um, animal makes certain uh, sign or certain sound for telling other animals that there is something happening here. Um, it is what. A fixed reference. Other feature is what? Cultural transmission. Cultural transmission. You may inherit, inherit to take something from your, for example, from your fathers, okay? To inherit something from your father and mother, from your parents. You may inherit inherit, sorry, uh, for example, your dark hair, your brown eyes, you see, but you cannot inherit language. This is a very important subject. This is a very important subject. I'm going to explain it in the coming uh, lecture.
Good. Um, cultural transmission. Do we uh, uh, inherit language or acquire language? Do we inherit language from parents or we acquire language? We acquire language. The answer is that we acquire language in a culture with other speakers. You see? With other speakers and not from a from parent genes. Not from parent genes. You see? But a cat a cat or a kitten given comparable early experiences will produce meow regardless without any you see without any uh, يعني without any uh, acquiring this is from experience they will what produce meow regardless this is this is a process whereby a language is based on from one generation to the next is described as cultural transmission okay so cultural transmission is what the ability to acquire language we acquire our first language as children in a culture okay and also the apparatus the apparatus of human beings is what ready for the machine i mean the machine or which is a gift from god tells that what human body uh, sorry human beings are ready for what for acquiring language and for speaking this is a feature of human beings communication is that creatures are born with a set of specific signals creatures are born with a set of specific signals who are creatures when they say creatures, it means that, the, for example, other creatures, not the human beings. Okay? They are born with what? With a set of specific signals that are produced, what? Instinctively. Instinctively. You know what is instinct? You see? Instinctively. So, cultural transmission of a specific language is crucial in the human acquisition process. This is a feature of a human process. In speech production, we have a physical level. Uh, this is other feature, sorry. This is other feature, which is what a duality. This is duality. In speech production, I'm going to explain this. In speech production, what do we do? We have a physical level at which we can produce individual sounds. Individual sounds like N, B, and E. You see? Like B and O and K. This is individually and you also may take b and o and other o and k to make what a word sometimes you take it individually and other times you put it uh, in combination you combine them together okay this ability of producing uh, symbols you see and combining them, them together in order to make uh, a word, this is called what? Duality. Okay? So, at one level, we have distinct sounds. At, at another level, we have distinct meanings. This duality of level in, uh, is what, in fact, one of the most economical features of a human language. This is not a feature of what of uh, animals. For example, the uh, dog. Th this is an example given here. A, do a dog which makes woof. You see, uh, for example, makes the, the, the sound that ma they make. For example, when they are happy. You see, you know the, the sound of the dog. 
the dog cannot make other word by using the same uh, symbols or the same signs or the same word and you cannot say who and other times say oh and so on and so forth to tell other idea so the duality is the feature of human language other thing which is what talking to animals if these are properties so these are properties that we talked about these are properties that we talked about which are um, um, the uh, communication reflexive uh, reflexivity displacement arbitrariness productivity cultural transmission and duality we uh, finish them to this to this one and we are going now to explain other things and to ex what to uh, make an experience to experience what uh, whether these properties are spe specific to human beings or can be used for example there are certain experiences whether these properties are unique to human beings or they are uh, what common to human beings and to animals they made certain experiences some of us some of the human beings say that we may talk to animals for example when you adopt uh, one of the animals you say i may learn this animal to talk if these properties of a human language make it so you make it such a unique communication system quite different from the communication system systems of other creatures then it would seem extremely unlikely that other creatures would be able to understand it if this is if these features are what only humans lang humans what features humans the properties then other creatures would not be able to understand it how do you say that i can i can teach what i can teach uh, the animal no it is not teaching it is not teaching it is a training it is a matter of a training you only train <coughs> this uh, for example animal to do certain activities to do certain actions and there are many ex experiences there are many examples given down about for example how you make what you think that you taught the animal but the, the animal is not learning you see is not learning uh, something from you no it is only uh, a matter of what uh, response just like what is stimuli stimuli and the response which is the uh, behaviorism it is a psychological theory you see um, for example riders of horses they say that when when i say who you see on the horse and they stop the, that the the horse understands what i say no this is not correct or when you say heel to dogs they will follow a heel okay these are some uh, what um, speculations let us say or impressions that the human beings have in their minds the standard explanation is that the animal produces a particular behavior in response you see behavior and this is what i talked about in behaviorism which is what a stimuli and response to a particular sound stimulus or noise but does not actually um, understand what the words and the noise mean they do not understand it is a matter of what a stimulus and response okay and there are what they said that we uh, for example the very near experience the very near experience the very near creature which may uh, um, understand and uh, imitate they think this is not a reality they think that the very near the uh, the very near creature which may produce and understand the human language is what the chimpanzee and they made different experiences you may read them uh, for example an experience of uh, what of the uh, chimpanzee called gua you see by uh, this experience by made by two scientists uh, Louila and Winthrop Kellogg 
and the other uh, on the chimpanzee called Vicky, which is made by Catherine and Kate Hayes. Okay, and um, there is what um, a result called apes and gorillas can, like chimpanzees, communicate with a wide range of vocal calls, but they just can't make human speech sounds. They cannot make human speech sounds. Yes, other experience made by uh, Beatrix and Ellen Gardner to uh, teach um, the chimpanzee about the American Sign Language. You see? Um, in a period of three and a half year, Washu, this is the name of the chimpanzee on which uh, Beatrix and Alan Gardner made, made an experience, came, this Washu, came to use signs for more than a hundred words, ranging from airplane, baby, and banana through the window. Through, uh, sorry, to window, women, and you. So, what, the, what did they teach um, what Washu to do? To arrange words to arrange the uh, the uh, words to make sentence on the on the window you see so um, to say that for example that give me tickle more fruit and open food drink you see the um, the uh, animal or the chimpanzee may make this sentence they taught the uh, the uh, chimpanzee to say the sentence but the chimpanzee did not understand what it says other uh, experience made on whom on uh, Sarah and Lena Sarah and Lena other what uh, chimpanzees on which these experiences of teaching language or of what of teaching language of using language as we will see in the coming item and they taught them to what to use for example <coughs> words or to arrange words to arrange the pictures of words sir and lena at the same time as washu was learning sign language. Another chimpanzee was being taught <coughs> another, this is other experience by Anne and David Primark or Primark. You see, most of those scientists do not work individually, but they work as couples. You see, most of scientists work as couples and to work together on, for example, a chimpanzee. What did they do? They uh, taught the chimpanzee to use a set of plastic shapes for the purpose of communicating with humans. These plastic shapes represented words, you see, that could be arranged in sequence to build sentence. Sarah, which is the, uh, the chimpanzee, preferred a vertical order. This is a, pre a, a vertical order. You see, to tell, for example, and it arranged these pictures in this way. Mary give chocolate, sa what, Sam, or Sarah. Mary give chocolate, Sarah. To say that, uh, to give it, to give her, what, a chocolate. Sarah was systematically trained to associate these shapes with objects or actions. Okay? According to this, for example, what do they do, those scientists? They reward, for example, the uh, chimpanzee when it arranges these words or these plastic shapes in a correct way. There is something here I have learned, or I have referred to, and I may give you as a question, what is the difference between learned and learned? And which is the correct shape? Learned or learned? What a similar training technique. It is a training technique. 
with another artificial language. For example, there is another experience by Don and Don Rambach to train chimpanzee called Lana. The language she learned was called Yakish and consisted of a set of symbols on a large keyboard linked to a computer. Both, this is for example, they use these signs, they thought, I mean, I mean the, this uh, scientist, Don Rombov, or Rombov, trained this chimpanzee called Lana to tell, for example, uh, give me water, or please machine give water, to use these signs on computer, you see. The result that both Sarah and Lana demonstrated an ability to use what? look like word symbols and basic structures in ways that are what superficially resemble the use of language. They do not use a language, as if they use a language. Yes. The controversy that um, other, for example, experiences made on a chimpanzee called Nim by the uh, psychologist Herbert Therese argued that chimpanzees simply produce signs in response to the demands of people and tend to repeat signs. All these experiences made on chimpanzees in order to arrive at a result that they may use a language but no one is uh, what um, is uh, valid. So uh, all these things for example the, uh, the, the chimpanzee I mean Nim, Nim's behavior was what? Conditioned behavior, okay? Conditioned response, sorry. Conditioned response. هذه الاستجابة الشرطية. الاستجابة الشرطية اللي هي موجودة في علم النفس. وهذا Herbert, Herbert Therese is what? A psychologist. And this what? The experience he made on the, this chimpanzee Nim is what? Conditioned response to cues provided often by human trainers so it is not what is Her Herbert's conclusion that chimpanzees are clever creatures who learn to produce a certain type of behavior uh, signing or symbol selection in order to get rewards and are essentially performing sophisticated tricks you see but did the chimpanzee use a language? No, it did not use a language. Um, other chimpanzee, which is Wash, Washu, which um, it is compared, I mean, Nim compared to Washu, which we talked about before. Uh, Washu could produce correct signs to identify objects in pictures. Washu and Nim, you see, Nim was kept in a windowless seal as a research animal and had to deal with a lot of different research assistants while Washu lived in a domestic environment. This is not important. The very important is what is the result that those scientists arrived at. Um, other, uh, for example, other scientist, which is Sue Savage Rombe, was attempting to train a, 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 bon, a bonobo, which is a Pijmi chimpanzee <coughs> called called Mata. This Mata, they taught Mata or trained Mata how to use the symbols of Yerkish. <coughs> the same experience made or made on uh, a chimpanzee before. This uh, Mata has a baby. You see, her son, her son, called Kanzi. Kanzi. You see. Kanzi spontaneously started using the symbol system with a great ease. He had learned not by being taught, but by being exposed to and observing. This is very important result. That chimpanzees do not learn by teaching, but by being exposed to, to the situation and by observing. You see? So, by um, 
had learned not by being taught but by being exposed to and observing a kind of language in use at a very early age you see and there is what a comparison between the uh, how did the Kanzi learned at the age of eight and when for example a baby at two and half year old okay the may use the same signs the last item in this chapter is using language is using language um, there is a question where Washu and Kanzi capable of you of taking part in interaction with the humans by using a simple system chosen by humans and not chimpanzees can they use the humans system or symbol system the answer is clearly yes they can use it did Washu and Kanzi go on to perform linguistically on a level comparable to a human child about to begin preschool the answer is just a clearly uh, no in arriving at these answers we have also had to face the fact that even with our list of key properties we still do not seem to have a non-controversial definition of what counts as using language do they use language really do animals or other creatures use language this is a question and needs an answer using language means what is then we have to understand what is using language first using language in a very broad sense means that language does serve as a type of communication system that can be observed in a variety of different situations and in one situation we look at the behavior of a two-year-old human child interacting with a caregiver as an example of using language in the broad sense in another situation we observe very similar behavior from chimpanzees and bonobos when they are interacting with the humans they know it has to be fair to say that in both cases we observe the participants using language okay however there is a difference underline the two-year-old's communicative activity is the capacity to develop a highly complex system so that this is the feature that the child can develop a highly complex system of sounds and structures plus a set of com computational procedures that will allow the child to produce extended discourse containing a potentially infinite number of novel utterances. Other creatures could not make this. No other creature has been observed using language in this, in this sense. Can, for example, animals make novel utterances? Can they make what highly complex system of sounds? No. So, all what we talked about all what the properties we talked about are what um, fundamentally are what the we say that this language or language is uniquely human language is uniquely human and because of the availability of these properties which are uh, what uh, humans feature humans properties then language is what uh, uh, is uniquely human thank you very much okay I mustn't forget that to tell you that you have to read the study questions and the tasks you see and there is what discussion topics these are very important what for example uh, in the examination and in other uh, activities please prepare for the coming lecture the sounds of language which is chapter 3 in the fourth uh, edition and it is chapter 5 in the second edition thank you very much